What's up everybody, Alberto Big Boost here. This is it. Today we are going to be caging my E36 because I'm finally going to be joining various competitions with the car. They require that I have a road cage in order to compete. Also in order to give ride alongs to my car I need a road cage. So I haven't been able to give ride alongs to my friends, Sharon, or any of my other sponsors that I try giving them ride along. So the day to put the cage is finally upon us. I'm also super happy to announce that a couple companies have joined up to help me with this cage, including Enjuka Racing. They're going to be supplying me a roll cage. They make a pre band roll cage kit for the BMW E36. There are some tweaks I would like to adjust to it, so I'm going to head over to Enjuka in a little bit and talk about what we can do over there. And I'm also happy to announce that the guys from Swag Off-Road sent me a couple tools to help make the fabrication a lot easier and do a couple tweaks with the roll cage. All right, guys, we arrive at Njuku Racing and we're picking up their pre-bent E36 roll cage for my car. But we're going to give this thing a twist. You want to elaborate kind of like the stuff that you're going to do to it? Well, I mean, I think we're going to make the A-pillar bars go all the way to the main hoop instead of running the halo to an A-pillar bar. That way yeah. it's one complete unit. And then uh, possibly putting a little twist on the, the door bars. Uh, all right, guys, so... Their configuration is called a halo style roll cage where it has from the main hoop, it has one continuous tube going from the main hoop all the way to the front and back and then the front pillar is attached to the corners of the halo. But the only issue with that is just my personal preference that I want to have a really good fitment against the, the roof and obviously headroom because I'm, you know, I'm not the smallest guy ever. And then also I want to put gussets on the side of this and with this configuration it's a little bit trickier to get it to be parallel to the A-pillar and we're going to change that so it's going to be a A-pillar style so it's going to go from here one continuous piece down and then the main hoop is going to attach, I mean the halo is going to attach from the front pillars in the middle so it's just going to be one short tube here. And then we'll do something here with the bars to make them a little bit lower in the front. Maybe go up on the back, so that way it's a lot easier to get in and out of the car. And... Tink! <laughs> Alright, here we have our E36 pre pent roll cage from Njuku Racing. I also have these little guys right here. So these are actually front pillar mounts for RX-7, but I'm going to use this to mount the pillars on so they make these little boxes so I'm able to drop the cage this much so I can weld the top and then put this on there then this lid's gonna go right here like this and then the roll cage gonna mount to the top I'll show you guys more info on this later once I get to that stage in the car for now let's get this thing out of here it's very heavy <laughs> alright I'm gonna need both hands for this I think I should definitely take this off in pieces. Maybe I'll take this off and yeah, it's a smart idea. Before we start with the cage, we first have to see where we're gonna put everything. So to design the door bars, I'm gonna have to sit in the car. I wanna see like about where my knee level is gonna be so I can determine the height of the door bars. Right now I have a bolt-on harness bar for the seat belt. That's gonna be gone, so I'm gonna have the harness bar on the main hoop since it's gonna be a lot closer to the seat it's gonna have to go a little bit up so I want it to be probably around this height right here versus the other bar is about five inches below that I'm not gonna make the door bars go outwards like NASCAR style into the door I want to keep my door panel I want to keep my window motor working and everything in case it rains trust me it really sucks when you are in a race car it starts raining and you can't roll your window up because you have no window it's terrible so i'm gonna keep the window for now the dashboard is gonna have to come off i gotta, I gotta prep all that back there i'm gonna have to remove some unnecessary wiring i think the radio is probably gonna go since i'm gonna have to get rid of the speakers on the kick panels and i'm also gonna get rid of the speakers on the back because i'm gonna seal the back off as a firewall who needs music? We got a race car. It's a loud exhaust. You got turbo spool. You got blow valves on. You got anti lag. 
You got tire screeching noises. You don't need the radio. Moving on to the back of the car, stuff gets also a little bit complicated because I have this search tank here. So I'm probably gonna have to make a base and move it back a little bit. So the hoses can pretty much stay the same, but the location where this is mounted is literally in the way of something else. You look at this little hump right here. I'm going to install a brace that attaches from the rear strut tower into the rear subframe mounting hole. So this is gonna be taken off. The subframe mounts from underneath the car into the threads right underneath this. I'm gonna install a location to the rear strut towers, but in front of them. And then we're gonna brace it back with that, with that FT legal bar. Another thing that's gonna be gone is going to be the rear diffuser. And as cool as it looks, it's very inconvenient when I'm gonna jack the car up. If you look from here, you can't see the differentials. You have to go all the way down here, and then you can see the differential all the way over there. So when you're gonna change tires, it gets very complicated. Another thing that's probably gonna be gone is the wing. The wing is uh, not very convenient for running oval courses. My first competition is gonna be in an oval track, so I don't wanna be in a disadvantage or cause an unnecessary accident by having a big carbon fiber wing sticking out of the car, getting stuck on the fence if I hit the wall and possibly hitting somebody. After removing the harness bar, I install the main hoop. Well, it's not really installed, just like kind of like in place. I'm surprised that the fitment is literally pressed against the bottom and it's pressing against the top. It's like super solid fitment there, straight. Now, I'm working on the door bar fitment so I don't want the door bar too high because it's gonna hit my elbow. My elbow is around here. My elbow is around here. So if I have the door bar higher, whenever I'm steering, I'm gonna be hitting my elbow right against the door bar. And I'm gonna have it kind of like at this height. Then right here, I want to make, a, I don't know what degree bend yet. We'll figure that out later. But I want it to bend upwards to provide more rib protection but also still allow for elbow clearance so this is gonna go up and I wanted to pretty much meet with this mark right here so it has to go up like probably like eight inches here is the rest of the tubes laid out by size you got the longest bars to the shortest bars and then the door bars over there I am NOT gonna be using those front pillar bars or the front halo so those are gonna get custom made. So I do have the door bars. I have the door bar ribs, which are these six tubes right here. These ones are gonna be the intrusion bars. Then from here on we have, um, I believe this is the, the diagonal pipe, which is the longest, dash bar. And then these four pipes right here, um, two that are the same should be the bars that go to the rear strut towers and these two right here are gonna be the harness bars I took one of the side bars and I bent it 25 degrees by hand almost impossible I have to use the engine stand to hold this thing on because it's supposed to be anchored to the floor so like pulling on this thing while keeping the thing from lifting up and trying to flip on me really hard but we're gonna change that with a tool that I have in a box over there check this out 25 degree bend at the elbow worked perfectly of course the pipe's gonna go a little bit lower so my elbow is gonna be right about here and then it goes up so it has a little bit more rib cage protect it has a little bit more rib cage protection um i don't want to go too far up because if i go too far up then it's gonna make it a little bit harder to weld the harness bar so i'm gonna have it a little bit below that so there's plenty of clearance to weld this stuff around too there's also this other hump right around here so it will make welding the pipe a lot harder so you always gotta have room around the pipe so you can get a full weld all the way around otherwise it's kind of pointless to get good fitment if you can't get a full weld around the pipe here i have five boxes that just came in from swag off-road so we got oh, wait we got one two three four and five i wonder what this is this is soft but uh which one should we open first 
I'll just open the first one here, the one that's in front. There's nothing in this. All right, there's definitely something in here. Now this is cool. So we have our hole punches here. Uh, I wonder what size this one is. I'm gonna have to look up the specs. There's another one. I think you might. I probably will be using this one a lot. I like this size. We got this one here. This is the part that we really need. This is a bracket to convert my pipe bender into a hydraulic pipe bender. I can't wait to put this on. Some hardware, very important instructions because I have no idea how to put this thing together. So we'll read this in a little bit. And then there's something else in here. Plate. Plate. additional stuff. I'm digging the green. Oh, these are those magnetic koozies. So I can go like, eek. Or you want to drink? I'll test this out later. We got some stickers. And then our last package. I'm gonna be very careful when opening this. And we have a swag off-road t-shirt. Here's the back. Does that mean I have to wear this while I'm fabricating the roll cage? I successfully modified my machine to be hydraulic thanks to the swag adapter this is an installed finished version i have the air hooked up and i have a piece of pipe over there that i wanted to try out so i have this is the pipe that i bent yesterday by hand there's 25 degrees on this including the spring back so we're gonna do the same thing with this other pipe i already marked we we'll have to start the bend right here and we're gonna see how easily we can bend this with the hydraulic version all right, we're going to feed the tube to the bender. Then we're gonna stop it right at the mark that I did before, about right there. And then set the dial at zero. There, at zero. I'm gonna put this at zero right here. So we wanna go all the way to 25 degrees. That, I almost messed up the pipe because of that. I went like three degrees over what I needed to do. So we have the bend right on the way. Now I do have the spring back thingy. So we're just gonna twist here. And it's gonna spring back at the zero. Well, kind of. There you go. Now we take this pin. Please don't fall. It's gonna fall. Nope. Not today. 
And then pull our pipe. We have our bend. And since we went those little three degrees more, of course, it did this. Still doesn't matter. That's pretty close. I mean, it's only that much different. It's just the sidebar. And now if we were an A pillar, then we'll be in trouble. But being the sidebar, it's totally acceptable. I think seriously now for the next step, I'm going to have to remove the seats as well as the dashboard. Okay, I have the pipe pretty much how I had it. I had to cut it twice, reposition it to clock it the right way because this bend is in one plane and then this one is in a different plane. So this bends out this way. I want it, I want to put some gussets. I want some spacing over here. I purposely don't want it flush in order to be able to do the gusset size that I want. Then up here is very important that I bend it and it's gonna be literally touching against the roof up here and then into the main hook. Now I did bend this about two degrees too much so it's angling down ever so slightly. So when I do the final piece tomorrow, I'm gonna bend it a little bit less so I get it straight shot into the main hoop. We're going to Njuku Racing right now. I got the pipe that we bent yesterday. I brought it as a mock-up piece and we're heading to Njuku. They're gonna measure that pipe and recreate it as a one piece tubing and then mirror it to the other side as well as cut the piece for the halo bar on the top. That's gonna save us a lot of time in fabricating this stuff, trying to figure out by hand because I don't have the right tools to measure um, the bends. So they might not be accurate. And piping right now for the OM steel is like extremely expensive. So I don't have like a lot of materials just laying around to just play around with bends and have them not be right. And you got Florida the highest spot right here, which is a citrus tower. Fun fact. We just came back to Njuku and they got the pipe that I brought over, they replicated it, did it a little bit longer. They also test fitted it on an E36 that I have right here to test fit stuff such as a roll cage, which completely enough is already stripped down. And then on top of that, we have the layout right here. If I want to replicate this pipe, it can easily be done, right, Kenda? Yes. So you're going to be in charge of replicating the pipe. Okay. There's the other one right here, which is the mirrored version of the pipe and then we have this other pipe right here which is gonna be the roof halo oh, all right we gotta load that in the truck now sure, yeah. meanwhile david is getting some intel on the cars and having some fun or angels having some fun that goes in the car over there trip we're all sleepy after eating um, hibachi food and um, getting the pipes out and food. I ran out of my old coffee so I'm gonna get an actual real one from the store someone's steak when it's well done.
I just finished welding the plates for the main hoops. So we have an 8 inch steel plate, it's like a triangle here, and it bends down, welds over here. Instead of doing two pieces, so you just did it on one piece. This is gonna allow us to place the main hoop in place and then drop it. So we literally slide it forward and it's gonna allow us to drop the main hoop so we can weld the top parts. You know guys, I didn't really pay attention while I was fixing everything in there. The guys, uh, what do you do? Oh, I took the wing off. So we got no wing. No more wing. So this now, how's it gonna match the thing? Huh? Yeah, this is like almost impossible. So I have to figure out a way to actually cover these holes. Maybe to remove this. Th yeah. Oh, this kind of comes off. Yeah. But I'll probably just get some purple vinyl and just like put it on top. Yeah. You know what's funny? We're what? seeing purple here, but on the camera it looks blue. Oh my god, it does look blue. What does it look blue? My car literally looks blue and I'm looking at it right now, it looks purple. This makes no sense. What is that? Oh now that we're leaving, you're bringing this? Yeah, I couldn't I get this tractor earlier? I forgot I had it. Ah! I will say it's actually pretty slow. Jesus, can I get out of the way? Sorry. We're now getting ready to weld the main hoop in place. Not fully welding it, but we're just tacking it in place. And make sure that it was even one inch from this edge to the main hoop. Same thing on the other side. I have everything set up. I have this dowel so it's exactly 90 degrees. So it's completely vertical and straight. So we're gonna tack this. I don't wanna fully weld this because I just don't want it to move out of the way when I'm trying to weld this pipe. So then after I weld this, then I can break this weld and move the pipe forward for everything else. But we don't wanna fix this into the car just yet. I just finished making these little boxes. So Njiku made this pre-bent for me. I decided to add a little bit of a base on the bottom since uh, it's gonna be pretty much held up on the side. I wanted to have also a solid platform on the bottom, especially if you jack up the car from that corner, it'll have a nice solid plate connecting to the roll cage. I'm about to weld the passenger side A pillar. So it's gonna go from down there all the way around. I'm gonna weld it on the top I just finished mocking out the box in the bottom, so we're gonna install this tube real quick. So I'm just gonna do two tack welds on the top. Definitely not the most comfortable place ever, but this is what you gotta do in order to weld these things.
this took care of the rear plates so this ones are gonna be on the wheel wells I am not gonna do it on the chassis back there because I am gonna put the reinforcement bar that's allowed by FD so this is a very nice and easy way to put the bars right here that way I can have a one piece firewall and have a lot more room for activities back here as well I welded the A pillars halfway through so it's like half circle then I'm gonna grind this tack weld I'm gonna pull the roll cage forward it's gonna drop from here like about four inches down then I can just remove this stand right here and then the whole thing will drop down in the front too and that way it allows me to weld that oh well hold on there sorry guys battery died all right tomorrow we're gonna drop the cage weld the top the other half over here we're gonna weld the down bars to there and then we also have to fabricate a halo tube. We're probably gonna have a bend on both sides to have it tucked up as high as I can to the ceiling. So before I go home, a quick recap of the video. We did the main hoop, we did the front pillars and the six base plates for the main six points of the cage. On the next video, we're gonna be doing the rear bars, we're gonna be doing the well on the top of the cage and we're gonna be doing the halo and probably we're gonna try to do the intrusion bars that go from the front pillars to the footwell firewall that allows for extra foot protection in case of side collision and your feet don't get crushed against your pedals definitely don't want that and also thank you so much swag off-road gear for sending me some cool magnetic koozies no that's the least of it but that guy back there which is the hydraulic pipe bender this was very useful on getting the pipes where it needed to be. Even though they were pre-bent, I had to bend them slightly more. As well as the door bars got bent into place. So that's going to facilitate all the work that I have to do. Since uh, bending is so much easier. You just have to do this. Instead of like having to put three knees pulling on the bar. And also tie that to the floor, which is very hard. Are you recording me? Well... Jokes on you because I'm recording you. You might end up being the thumbnail of this video. Also, this little guy right here. We got our illuminator LED light mat that is very, very, very handy. I can just place it all over the car, illuminate right where I need to weld. Yeah, so it was just welding over there. So I have that thing pointed right over there. When I weld on the top, I just lay it on the floor. If I want to weld the bottom, I just put it on the top. So if I want to weld the front, I just put it on the back. If you see. All right, almost died to get a thumbnail picture. We made it. Now I somehow gotta get out of here without dying again. So stay tuned for the next video. This is part one of maybe two or three videos in the road cage. I'll try to cover as much as I can, but we're super busy over here and I got a bunch of more surprises to show you guys in the future videos. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be posting videos Tuesdays and Thursdays around noon to 3 p.m. every week. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more awesome content. Alberto Big Boost here. And don't forget to keep making power. <laughs> I don't think I'm doing this right. This is how you get out of a cage car. I need help. <laughs> Roll cages. Not easy. But I guess Alberto has to make one for me too. Are you ready? <laughs> no. <laughs> Watching Alberto work on his roll cage has been uh, kind of <laughs> sad. It's hard. It's so hard to work on a car, uh, inside a car. You're doing a roll cage. What are you doing, you crazy maniac? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I can get Janice to help me build a roll cage. What do you think? <laughs>